This is a pen. You probably got one on your desk. Pick it up. Hold it. Look at it. Just a pen, right? This simple piece of technology actually requires a lot to make it work. Your standard mass manufactured plastic ballpoint pen has a polypropylene barrel, a polystyrene ink reservoir, a push button, a clip, a thrust tube, a thrust device, a cap, a coiled seal spring, a conical brass nib, and a teeny tiny tungsten carbide ball on the very tip of the nib. What's the little ball for? Don't worry, we'll get to that. The humble ballpoint pen is the end point of an evolutionary process that began all the way back in 2000 BC, when an Egyptian took a reed from the riverbank, fashioned the stem into a hollow tube, and poured some ink down it. Voila, the first pen. Centuries passed and the reed became a quill, then a metal fountain pen, but functionally, it was terrible. It would constantly blotch, smudge and leak, until... 1938. Europe is on the brink of war, and Laszlo Biro is a Jewish journalist living in Hungary. In his cramped, ink-splattered printing room, he has an idea. The next evolution of the pen. Laszlo Biro took quick-drying ink and put it in an airtight tube. No more leaks. But how do you get the ink to transfer onto paper? His solution was a tiny metal ball that fits snugly in the top of the pen. When you press the tip on a surface, the ball rotates, dragging ink onto the paper. Pretty clever. And you know who also thought it was pretty clever? The RAF. It's 1943 and their pilots desperately need pens that won't leak or explode at high altitudes. So the British buy Laszlo Biro's patent. From there, the ballpoint really took off. Today, 205,200 Biro's are sold every hour. The world produces close to 50 billion pens a year. That's enough pens to write a single unbroken line of ink that goes from the Earth to Pluto and back ten times. But take a quick guess. How many of those pens do you think are thrown away before they run out of ink? A tenth? A third? It's actually around four-fifths, or 38 billion a year. And what are they made of? Cheap plastic. The production of polystyrene releases chlorofluorocarbons into the atmosphere, gases which have 1,200 times the greenhouse effects of CO2, and you can't recycle them because of the metal components, so they all end up in landfill. The evolution of the pen has taken us from a reed on the riverbank to a design that's used by billions, but is completely unsustainable for the environment. Within the graduate team at Clifford Chance, we realised it was time for the pen to evolve again. For law fairs and other recruitment activities, the graduate team had been producing 10,000 pens a year, not to mention brochures, pads of paper, mugs, umbrellas, oyster card holders, water bottles, and a myriad of other items. This was just how graduate recruitment worked, and we thought merchandise was a vital part of how we operated. But from 2013 onwards, we stopped being able to ignore how after every law fair we went to, the bins would be overflowing with glossy brochures and flyers, destined for landfill. A thought stuck in our heads. Is what we're doing harming the planet? Is there a better way to create meaningful engagements with students? We decided things needed to change. By 2016, we had scrapped the majority of our brochures and leaflets. We reduced our paper collateral consumption by 99%, saving 5.7 tonnes of paper and avoiding 8.5 tonnes of CO2 emissions. That's the same as planting 141 trees, charging 1,084,024 mobile phones, or flying from London to Los Angeles 12 times. We also scrutinised our processes more generally and implemented small changes that had a surprisingly large impact. Things like thinking carefully about how many people needed to travel to each event, introducing vegetarian catering during our schemes, and massively improving our virtual engagement. And by 2020, we'd reduced our graduate recruitment merchandise down to a few key environmentally friendly items. Firstly, our notepads. The covers are regenerated leather, made from 100% recycled leather fibres. And the paper is FSC certified and sourced from a sustainable forest right next to the factory. And then, of course, there's our pens. Our new pens are now made out of fermented sugarcane rather than plastic. The manufacturing plant is powered by renewable energy from local sources, and 100% of the production waste is reused or recycled. We've even created a pledge, the Sustainable Recruitment Alliance. The pledge encourages graduate teams and other organisations to commit to reducing their carbon footprint. Of course, this is just one small part of Clifford Chance's groundbreaking environmental efforts, but we believe that every detail, no matter how small, makes a difference. This is a pen, but it's so much more than that. It's our pledge to you, our pledge that in all our recruiting efforts, we're moving swiftly towards a more sustainable, carbon-friendly future. <laughs>